Let's be real here. If you've been on the internet at all for the past two years, you probably know what an iceberg chart is. In case you don't, here's a quick explanation. Essentially, an iceberg chart is a meme format in which information regarding a certain topic is ranked from most well-known to most obscure, descending the iceberg as you go. For this video, I'll be going over the Nintendo DS and 3DS Iceberg created by Mari on IcebergCharts.com. I'm going to be keeping these explanations as short and concise as possible for the sake of time. There are over 100 entries after all. But if I feel the need to elaborate more, I will do so. Some entries have also been confined due to redundancy. Now, without further ado, let's jump right into this. Mies. Mies were introduced with the Wii and are meant to represent the user in a digital space. While they were not used for the DS, save for a few Japanese-only games, they were used for the 3DS. DSi DSi XL The Nintendo DSi was introduced in Japan in November 2008 and North America in April 2009. It's essentially the same as a standard Nintendo DS, save for the inclusion of a front-facing camera and the removal of the GVA slot. The Nintendo DSi XL is exactly what it sounds like, a larger version of the DSi, released in Japan in November 2009 and North America in March 2010. New Super Mario Bros. 1 and 2 New Super Mario Bros. was released for the DS in Japan and North America in May of 2006. It is notable for being, at the time, the first 2D platforming Mario game since Super Mario Land 2 in 1992. A direct sequel, New Super Mario Bros. 2, was released for the 3DS in Japan in July 2012 and North America in August 2012. Super Smash Bros. for the Nintendo 3DS This is the fourth entry in the ever-popular Super Smash Bros. series, released in September 2014 in Japan and in October 2014 in North America. Not much else to say about this one. Super Mario 64 DS This is the DS remake of the classic Super Mario 64, released in Japan in December 2004 and North America in November 2004. It adds new playable characters in the form of Luigi, Yoshi, and Wario, as well as a fake fourth edition they'll get into more shortly, along with a host of minigames. I personally have a lot of fond memories with this game. I spent quite a long time using action replay code to screw up the graphics. Good times. Mario Kart DS slash 7 Mario Kart DS is a fifth entry in the series, released in Japan in December 2005 and North America in November 2005. Notably, it was the first Mario Kart game to feature online multiplayer, utilizing the now-defunct Nintendo Wi-Fi connection. Mario Kart 7 is the seventh game, released in December 2011 in both Japan and North America. Most of the Pokémon games Between the DS and 3DS, there have been an absurd amount of Pokémon games released. I could go on and on about all the different spin-offs, but honestly, they're not that interesting. Well, except maybe for Pokemon Conquest. Instead, let's touch upon the heavy hitters. The 4th and 5th generation games saw released on the Nintendo DS, while the 6th and 7th generation games were released on the 3DS. Dual Screen Slash Developer System According to an old Nintendo support website, the DS stands for both Dual Screen in reference to the top and bottom screens, as well as Developer System, since it, quote, gives game creators brand new tools which will lead to more innovative games for the world's players. DS Lite In 2006, Nintendo released the DS Lite, a slimmer, lighter version of the DS. Functionality remained the same, though the DS Lite did have brighter screens and a longer battery life. Waluigi in Super Mario 64 DS This is in reference to a well-known hoax that Waluigi is supposedly unlockable in Super Mario 64 DS. Surely it would make sense, right? I mean, Wario was in the game after all. Unfortunately, this wasn't the case. This rumor was largely propagated by a fake magazine scan from 2005, detailing the methods needed to unlock the lanky lead. Although with the power of modding and ROM hacks, you can technically play as Waluigi in Super Mario 64 DS, just not in any official capacity. Nintendo Wi-Fi Connection slash Nintendo Network this was Nintendo's official multiplayer gaming service that was created on November 14th, 2005. Many kinds of games utilized it on both the DS and the Wii. It was discontinued on May 20th, 2014, and was replaced with Nintendo Network for the Wii U and Nintendo Switch Online later for the Switch. Virtual Console The 3DS allows for players to play classic games from the NES, Game Boy, Game Boy Color, and Game Gear via a virtual storefront. Game Boy Advance games were also available, but they were only offered to members of the Nintendo 3DS Ambassador Program, a sort of reward for players who purchased the 3DS before its price drop. Currently, the store is still open, but is set to be discontinued on March 23rd of this year. Backwards Compatibility The Nintendo DS has a slot that allows Game Boy Advance games to be played. The 3DS will also read DS game cards just fine, though it lacks the GBA slot. DS is the second best-selling console. 
pretty self-explanatory, the Nintendo DS sold 154 million units worldwide, just behind the PlayStation 2's 155 million units, and trailed by Nintendo's own Switch with 122 million units sold. 2DS slash new 2DS XL In 2013, Nintendo launched the 2DS in North America. It lacks the clamshell design and 3D functionality of a 3DS and was designed with younger gamers in mind. In 2017, they would launch the new Nintendo 2DS XL. Just like the new 3DS, which I'll touch on next, it featured an additional circle pad, shoulder buttons, and functionality with the Amiibo. It also has a clamshell design, unlike the regular 2DS. New 3DS The new Nintendo 3DS is a more powerful variant of the 3DS. Just like its 2DS counterpart, it has additional shoulder buttons, another circle pad, and functionality with Amiibo. It was launched in Japan in October 2014 and North America in February 2015. Miiverse. Oh boy, so Miiverse was essentially Nintendo's attempt at social media service for kids. You could post screenshots, comment on people's crappy scribbles they did with their stylus, among other things. Personally, I never really used Miiverse that much, but it did give us some iconic memes like Why Can't Metroid Crawl? and This game is fun, but I hate my parents, so it wasn't all that bad. Some games even had special functionality with it. Notably, the Miiverse stage in Super Smash Bros. for 3DS. Miiverse was discontinued in 2017, though elements of its design still live on in games like Super Mario Maker 2 and Splatoon 2 and 3 for the Switch. Stylus Yeah, I don't think I need to describe this one. It's pretty self-explanatory, honestly. Nintendo eShop This is the digital storefront for Nintendo's consoles. The Nintendo 3DS eShop is set to close this year. Special Editions the 3DS family had quite a lot of special editions released during the system's lifespan. They are too numerous to show them all, but some of my personal favorites include the Mario & Luigi Dream Team 3DS and the Legend of Zelda 25th Anniversary 3DS. Amiibo Remember the craze over these things when they launched back in 2014? Essentially, Amiibo are little figurines that have electronic chips in them that allow for communication with video games, unlocking content in some while providing small bonuses in others. There's been a whole host of the different Amiibo released over the years, and I do kind of find it surprising that they outlasted both the 3DS and the Wii U. I guess the allure of collecting things keeps these afloat. Super Mario 3D Land In November 2011, Nintendo released Super Mario 3D Land, a game that blends both free-roaming and 2D elements of previous Mario titles. Its sequel, Super Mario 3D World, is probably more well-known and more appreciated as it got a remake on the Switch. Luigi and New Super Mario Bros. Upon completing the game as normal, if you hold both the L and R buttons while selecting a save file, you'll load into the game as Green Mario. Uh, I mean Mario's Green Brother. He plays the same as Mario, so the change is purely cosmetic. The Legend of Zelda Phantom Hourglass slash Spirit Tracks slash Link Between Worlds Phantom Hourglass and Spirit Tracks are touchscreen-based Zelda games released in 2007 and 2009 respectively for the DS, while Link Between Worlds was released in 2013 for the 3DS. All three games received positive reviews and sold well, though Phantom Hourglass is often said to have aged the worst out of the three due to its repetitive nature. I haven't heard a single person say that they loved going through the Temple of the Ocean King multiple times. Mario & Luigi Bowser's Inside Story slash Paper Jam slash Dream Team Oh yeah, now we're getting into the good stuff. These three games are part of the larger Mario & Luigi series, an RPG series starring the Mario Brothers. It began on the GBA with Superstar Saga, released in November 2003, but all later entries would be seen on the DS and 3DS. Partners in Time and Bowser's Inside Story released on the former, while Dream Team and Paper Jam released on the latter. If you haven't played any of these games, you absolutely should, they're all fantastic. It's a shame that developer Alpha Dream went bankrupt in 2019, however. Now this legendary series sits in limbo. Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney you know Saul Goodman? It's like him, except Japanese. And not a criminal. In all seriousness though, this is a visual novel lawyer simulator that originally released in Japan for the Game Boy Advance in October 2001, but was later remade for the DS and released in North America four years later. This is also a pretty well-known game as it spawned a long-running series as well as a bunch of memes. Like any good game should. Nintendo Zone so from what I could gather, the Nintendo Zone was sort of a hotspot internet service that existed in Japan and very select locations in North America, beginning in 2008 and ending in 2018. At these hotspots, you could download special content and other services. A little bit of a strange one, honestly, I've never heard of this before, so I might be missing something here, but moving on. PictoChat this was a communication feature that was included by default on all DS, DSi, and DS Lite systems. Up to 16 people could communicate in a chat room through a LAN-only connection. 
It was limited even for the time, but this is another aspect of the DS system that I'm pretty nostalgic for. DS Headset. Pretty much exactly what it sounds like. It was released alongside Pokemon Diamond and Pearl in 2007 and was created to support voice chat and select games, as well as serve as an extension to the DS's microphone. I'm not too sure how popular this accessory was since I've never heard of it before I started research on this video. Nintendogs. Nintendogs is a pet simulator game released in April 2005 in Japan and August 2005 in North America for Nintendo DS. This is another one of those games that I'm sure a lot of DS owners owned and played at least once. It's also the second best-selling DS game, shipping just shy of 24 million units. DSiWare. Just like WiiWare on the Wii, DSiWare were games released digitally on the DSi's digital storefront. Quite a lot of good games were released this way, such as Mighty Flip Champs, Shantae Risky's Revenge, and my personal favorite, Alpha Bounce. Spot Pass and Street Pass Me Plaza. Now this one is interesting because the latter was a highlight of the 3DS system for me. Street Pass was a system that allowed different 3DS consoles to communicate with one another in sleep mode or otherwise. When this happens, users' Mii's are shared and appear in their respective Street Pass Me Plaza, where you could spy on their game activity among other things. Some games on the 3DS allowed for special Street Pass content, and the 3DS itself had some fun implementations of Street Pass that encouraged users to just go out and walk around with their console, such as puzzles whose pieces could be gathered from other users. It was a very unique feature and I'm a little sad that the Switch didn't do something similar. Spot Pass, from what I can tell, is related to Nintendo Zone in some way, allowing game updates to be downloaded in sleep mode from hotspots or something. AR Games. The 3DS came pre-installed with an app called AR Games, which allowed for the use of rudimentary augmented reality games using cards that came bundled with the system. Two are available to play from the start while the others can be unlocked through continued play. Rob in Mario Kart DS. Rob, the NES toy from back in the day, appears in Mario Kart DS as one of the game's four unlockable characters. He is unlocked upon getting gold trophies in either All Nitro or Retro Mirror Cups. Notably, he is the first non-Mario character to be playable in Mario Kart, a trend that will continue with Mario Kart 8 and Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. Nintendo Video. This was a video on demand servers for the Nintendo 3DS that allowed users to stream and download animations from content creators such as College Humor and Ardman Animations. It was introduced in 2011 and didn't last long, being discontinued in 2015. Brain Age. This is a series of edutainment games that began with the release of Brain Age, Train Your Brain in Minutes a Day, released in Japan in May 2005 and North America in April 2005. The game is designed to get your brain thinking by featuring a lot of different kinds of puzzles, Sudoku being one of them. Man, I hate Sudoku so much. City Boy. The Nintendo DS might have had a very different name. During its development, the name City Boy was floated around as a potential name for the system, meant to appeal to the growing urban, free-spirited demographic of teens at the time. Personally, I think this name kind of sucks, but who am I to judge? RetroArc RetroArc is a program that allows for easy, streamlined use of emulators. I think this is referring to either the fact that you can emulate DS games through RetroArc, or how you can run RetroArc on a modded DS slash 3DS. Nintendo DS slash DSi browser. So this is kind of funny. The Nintendo DS featured an opera-based web browser that needed to be inserted into the cartridge slot with RAM in the GBA slot. This web browser was very bare bones and lacked a lot of functionality, such as no Java, no Flash, and no movie files. In fact, IGN called it, quote, so crippled and slow that it's very close to unusable. The DSi had a web browser that needed to be installed from the DSi store. R4s. R4s are flash cartridges that are used to run homebrew software and custom ROMs on a Nintendo DS. They were widely used for piracy on the system, causing a lot of headaches for Nintendo. The creators of these flash carts and their clones often faced illegal action, and they were banned from sale in some countries such as Japan, Australia, Belgium, and South Korea, among others. 3DS's launch the Nintendo 3DS did not have the most graceful of launches, despite being an overall success for Nintendo. Common criticisms included a high price tag and weak launch title lineup. In fact, just four months after it released in North America, Nintendo cut the price of the 3DS from $249.99 to $169.99, nearly a third of its original price. 3DS Classics. These were six games, five NES and one arcade game, released on the 3DS's eShop. Functionally, they were identical from their retro counterparts, but had additional 3D effects applied to them. The games that got this special treatment were Excitebike, Kid Icarus, Kirby's Adventure, Twin Bee, Urban Champion, and Xevious. The DS is the most resistant console, made of Nintendium as they say. How many times did you drop your DS on every surface imaginable only for it to continue functioning as if nothing ever happened to it? According to some sources, each DS unit was subject to a lot of strict tests to ensure its durability. I was never sure if these were just folklore or based in reality. If anyone can confirm this for me, please let me know in the comments. Blowing into 3DS's microphone. 
On the Nintendo 3DS's home screen, if you blow into the microphone while you have an app selected, the icon on the top screen will spin rapidly. It's a cute little easter egg. Circle Pad Pro So before the release of the new Nintendo 3DS, if you wanted a second circle pad, you'd need to get this peripheral which clamped onto the bottom of the 3DS and was powered by AAA batteries. It was good for games that benefited from twin stick movement, such as Resident Evil Revelations and Metal Gear Solid 3D Snake Eater. Flipnote Studio slash Hatena these were animation studios on the DS and 3DS respectively that allow people to make cute little animations of their favorite things. You've seen these before, I'm sure. Professor Layton series. These are some well-beloved puzzle games that started with the release of Professor Layton and the Curious Village, releasing in Japan in February 2007 and North America the following year. I personally never played them, but I hear a lot of good things about them, so if puzzles are your thing, it might be worth checking out. Various Sonic games. Just like with the Pokemon entry, many different Sonic games were released across the DS and 3DS's lifespans. Some notable ones include Sonic Rush for the DS in 2005, and Sonic Generations for the 3DS in 2011. Tomodachi Life. It's like The Sims, but infused with that Japanese weirdness we all seem to love. It was released for the 3DS in Japan in April 2013 and North America in June 2014. All hail the Virtual Boy indeed. <laughs> McDonald's ECDP In 2010, McDonald's released a training game for the DS called E-Crew Development Program for use in its Japanese restaurants. It was never meant to be shown to the public outside of training purposes, and it's unknown how much it was used, let alone for how long. In September 2020, a copy of the game was sold at auction for $3,000, with its data later being dumped onto the Internet Archive in November of the same year. Citra. This is a popular emulator used for emulating 3DS games. Its name is derived from CTR, which is the name of the model of the original 3DS. Bye bye, Easter egg. I think this is referring to the fact that if you shut your DS closed while Super Mario 64 DS is playing, Mario will say bye bye. This also works on the 3DS too. Mario Party DS anti piracy screens. So on October 13th, 2020, YouTube user Joey Perleone uploaded a video supposedly showcasing an anti-piracy screen featured in Mario Party DS. The thing is, this was only a mock-up and no such screen actually exists in the game. Despite this being a fake, for a while it was propagated as truth, so much so that the Cutting Room Floor, a wiki dedicated to chronicling cut or hitting content in video games, had to lock their page on Mario Party DS due to people editing it and claiming that the mock-ups were factual. Honestly, they look pretty legit, so I don't blame people for falling for this one too much. Tomodachi Collection. Did you know that Tomodachi Life was actually a sequel? You probably didn't, as its predecessor, Tomodachi Collection, was released only in Japan in June 2009. Interestingly, because the DS did not support Miis on its own, the Miis in Tomodachi Collection could be either ported from your Wii console or created in-game using its own Mii Maker. Guitar Hero DS. Yes, believe it or not, there was a Guitar Hero game released for the Nintendo DS. This one, called Guitar Hero on Tour, was released in June 2008 and required the use of a guitar grip peripheral that needed to be inserted into the DS's GBA slot, meaning that the game was not able to be played on a DSi, DSi XL, or 3DS. Nintendo DS emulator for the PSP slash Desmoom. There seem to be a few of these, but from what I can tell, they're not very good. Desmoom PSP and Desmoom are too. Face Raiders. This is an AR game that came pre-installed on all 3DS systems. It's a bare-bones shooter type game, but I guess it's good if you want to blast the faces of people you hate or something. Metroid Dread. This game had a curious development history. It was originally conceived for the DS as a sequel to Metroid Fusion, and was supposedly meant for release sometime in 2005 or 2006, but like many projects of Nintendo's, it got stuck in development hell. For a while, people seemed to believe Metroid Dread was nothing more than an urban legend or something similar, so you can imagine people surprised when Glee when it was revived for the Switch in 2021. New Super Mario Bros. Secret Challenge Mode I actually didn't know about this one, despite being a big fan of this game as a child. After finishing the game, if you press L, R, L, R, X, X, Y, Y, the challenge mode will be enabled, which prevents the player from scrolling the screen backwards. However, because of this change, some levels in the game become unable to be completed due to the differing scrolling methods. Sonic DS this was a tech demo shown at E3 2004 that featured Sonic running around while being controlled with the DS's touchscreen. It's unknown if this was ever meant to be more than a tech demo though, as Sonic Rush, released the following year, was visually and mechanically different from this demo. Smash Wii U Controller If you wanted to use your Nintendo 3DS as a controller for Super Smash Bros. for the Nintendo Wii U, you needed to shell out $1 for an application on the 3DS to do so. Pretty scummy if you ask me. Why not just make it free? Nino Nuki 
I believe this is a misspelling of Nino Kuni, which is a series of turn-based RPGs that began on the DS with the release of Nino Kuni Dominion of the Dark Jin in Japan in December 2010. Western audiences might know it better as Nino Kuni Wrath of the White Witch, which was an enhanced port of the game released in North America for the PS3 in January 2013. Mario Kart DS's Unused Tracks Within Mario Kart DS's data exists 10 unused tracks. Some of them are pretty neat, such as Old Mario GC, which is a remake of Mario Circuit from Double Dash, and Dokkan Course, an interesting track that features weird pipes. DS wasn't going to replace the GBA. This is true, actually. The DS was intended to be a third pillar of sorts, along with the GBA and the GameCube. This is why the GBA still saw new releases after the DS launched in 2004, though the inclusion of backwards compatibility with GBA games ensured the demise of the former. Parallax Barrier. There's a lot of technicalities behind this, but I'll do my best to explain it. Basically, this is how the 3DS can show stereoscopic 3D images without the use of 3D glasses. By placing opaque barriers at precise intervals, the eyes can see two different sets of pixels at once, thus creating the illusion of depth. The downside to this is that you have to be looking at the screen in a very specific way for the effect to be visible, a problem that plagued the original 3DS, though the new 3DS fixed this issue. Assassin's Creed Lost Legacy. This is a cancelled game in the Assassin's Creed series meant for release on the 3DS. It was announced at E3 2010, but never saw the light of day. According to an interview with Assassin's Creed Revelations writer, the game was scrapped and the story reworked into the former. Chibi Robo Ziplash. This is the fifth entry in the cult classic Chibi Robo series, released in Japan and North America in October 2015 for the 3DS. Unlike its predecessors, which are more open ended adventure games, this game was a side scrolling platformer. As of the release of this video, this remains the last Chibi Robo game to be released. Persona Q2 Persona Q2 New Cinema Labyrinth is the sequel to Persona Q Shadow of the Labyrinth, a spin off of the Persona series, which is itself a spin off of Shin Megami Tensei. Notably, this game was the last game released for the Nintendo 3DS in North America, releasing in June 2019, two years into the lifespan of the Nintendo Switch. Cory in the House Cory, you a busta. Swap Note Essentially, the 3DS's follow-up to PictoChat. It had more robust features such as the ability to send photos and audio to other players. Special Mies Certain special Mies would visit your Street Pass Plaza via Spot Pass to coincide with special events. For example, a Mie of Reggie fils released on the 3DS's first anniversary, while a Mie of Shigeru Miyamoto released during E3 2013. Mega Man Star Force 1, 2, and 3 this trilogy of action RPGs for the DS released in 2007, 2008, and 2009 respectively. I don't know much about these games, nor am I the biggest Mega Man fan to begin with, but people seem to generally like these games, so that's good at least. Mega Man ZX, ZX Advent. These are two distant sequels to the Mega Man Zero games on the GBA, both of which were released on the DS in September 2006 and October 2007 respectively. While I haven't played the former, I can vouch for the latter it was one of my favorite games on the system. Check it out if you can. Crash Landed. Crash Landed was meant to be an entry in the Crash Bandicoot series, with planned release on the PS3, Xbox 360, Wii, and Nintendo DS. Development began around 2009, but it seemed like it didn't get very far before being axed. Prototype gameplay exists for the DS version, but no such footage exists for the other versions at the time of this video's release. DS Birthday Greeting. This one's cute. If you turn on your Nintendo DS system on the day of your birthday, as determined in the system settings, a higher pitched chime will play. Opening a Picto Chat will also give you a nice little birthday wish. M rated DS games. Out of all 1,791 games released for the DS in North America, only 11 were ever rated M for Mature by the ESRB. These games are Resident Evil Deadly Silence, a 2006 remake of the original Resident Evil released to celebrate the franchise's 10th anniversary. Crime Scene, a forensics detective simulator released in 2010. Grand Theft Auto Chinatown Wars, an entry in the GTA series released in 2009, featuring gameplay like that of the original Grand Theft Auto. Core, a sci-fi first-person shooter released in 2009. Ultimate Mortal Kombat, a port of Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3 released in 2007. Dementium The Ward, a survival horror game released in 2007. Dementium 2, a sequel to the previous game released in 2010. Theresia, a horror visual novel released in 2008. 999, 9 Hours, 9 Persons, 9 Doors, a mystery visual novel released in 2010. Shin Megami Tensei Strange Journey, an RPG released in 2010. And Touch the Dead, a rail shooter with touchscreen controls released in 2007. <laughs> Sorry. 
Super Mario Galaxy DS. So back in 2007, a man by the name of Pablo Belmonte created a fake trailer for a DS version of Super Mario Galaxy for a class project of his. For a while, it seemed like to have a lot of people fooled, and I can understand that. Just like Purple Prize's Waluigi, the effort behind this is outstanding, especially considering the fact that Super Mario Galaxy wasn't even out yet for the Wii when he made this fake mock-up, meaning that all the material had to be recreated from scratch watching trailers. I also discovered that there's currently a fan project in the works to bring Super Mario Galaxy to the DS for real, so that's neat. Game & Watch Collection This is a DS game released in Japan in July 2006 and North America in December 2008 that was only available to Club Nintendo members in both regions. Despite being boldly titled as a collection, it only features three Game & Watch games, Oil Panic, Donkey Kong, and Greenhouse. Television Accessory for the Nintendo DS This is another one of those strange peripherals that barely gets mentioned nowadays. In 2007, Nintendo released the Nintendo DS Digital TV Tuner exclusively in Japan. It does exactly what you would imagine such a device doing. It displayed TV programs on the top screen and channel listings on the bottom. Classic Night This one I'm a little unsure of. The only source to what Classic Night could be that I could find was a Spanish Phantom Lost Media Wiki. Supposedly this was a construction simulation game meant for release on the DS in 2009, but was cancelled when the developer lost the source code in a home robbery. I feel like it may be missing more to the story, so if I am, again, please just let me know in the comments. Halo DS As interesting as it would have been to see Halo on the DS for real, this refers to merely an unofficial demo of such. It seemed like for a while in the mid-2000s that there were rumors about a portable Halo game, but on January 7, 2007, IGN staff member Matt Casamassina claimed to have played a version of Halo on the DS, and even uploaded footage of such. In an interview with Bungie developers in July 2007, they stated, quote, It's very likely that somebody at some point in time created a prototype and tried to pitch it, which is probably what Casamassina is talking about, but there has never been an officially funded or sanctioned development of any sort of DS Halo game. Mean Girls DS For a while, this was one of the most infamous pieces of video game lost media. Based on the 2004 comedy film of the same name, this was meant to be released for the Nintendo DS in 2009 or 2010. Sources seemed to be unsure if the game was going to be a minigame collection or an adventure game of some kind, and only the cover and a few screenshots were known to exist. That is, until May 26, 2021, when YouTuber Ray Mona announced that she had gotten into possession of a ROM of the game, which she later uploaded a full playthrough of on July 14th of the same year, finally putting an end to this mystery. Nanashi no Game. Game? Eh, I don't know. This is a horror game released for the Nintendo DS in Japan only in July 2008. Nanashi no Game literally translates to the nameless game or the game with no name, and follows a somewhat meta plot about a student who becomes obsessed with, and cursed by, a nameless game for the fictional TS game system, a system that bears no resemblance to any real world of consoles at all. It got two sequels that were also Japan only. New Super Mario Bros. Walkthrough Part 22 So for whatever reason, this unassuming YouTube video of Ceratox 09's New Super Mario Bros. Walkthrough, uploaded on June 8, 2009, has over 36 million views, far more than any other video in their series. It holds a Guinness World Record for most watched walkthrough video. I tried to determine why this one video has so many views. It apparently has something to do with the thumbnail? I don't know, but either way, this is a little bit of a curiosity. Nintendo DSi Exclusive Games In North America, three titles were released physically that could only be played on the Nintendo DSi and DSi XL systems. These games are Photo Showdown, a monster battling RPG released in 2009. Players can take pictures of their environment, and based on the colors and shape of the objects in said pictures, a monster is created. Picture Perfect Hair Salon, also released in 2009. This is what it sounds like, a hair salon simulator. And System Flaw, a 2009 game that is kinda like Face Raiders, but shittier. Metopia rated 18 plus in Russia. In 2013, Russian President Vladimir Putin signed the For the Purpose of Protecting Children from Information Advocating a Denial of Traditional Family Values Bill, which prohibits homosexual content in media targeted towards children. As a result, Metopia, an RPG for the 3DS, where your Mies can get into relationships as a gameplay mechanic regardless of gender, was given an 18 plus rating. It's backwards and stupid, but what else would you expect from Russia? Mario Kills Tanuki. People for the Ethical Treatment of Animals, or PETA, is an animal rights group that is infamous for their, shall we say, less than subtle messaging. In 2011, to coincide with the release of Super Mario 3D Land, they released an endless runner game called Mario Kills Tanuki on their website, in which you play as a Tanuki fed up with Mario's thievery of your skin. Conceptually, it doesn't even make sense since the Tanuki suits you obtained in the game come from question mark blocks, and it's just another weird publicity stunt by the organization. 
Rusty's Real Deal Baseball. This is a very curious little downloadable title for the Nintendo 3DS. On the surface, it's a typical free-to-play game featuring a myriad of baseball-themed minigames, but look a little closer and you'll discover a game with sinister, dark secrets. I'm just kidding. Really, the only curious thing I'm referring to is the fact that you can buy the other minigames, as to be expected from a free game. You can haggle with the titular Rusty to lower the real, monetary price of each game. I don't think I've ever seen a game that does this before, so it stands out to me in that manner, even if I haven't played it personally. Nitro System This was the name given to the Nintendo DS's development kit, developed by Intelligent Systems, the developers behind Fire Emblem. DSi TWL Leak Prototype I think this is referring to a prototype DSi build dated May 5th, 2008 that was dumped online on June 1st, 2019. There's a lot of technical language here that I don't quite understand, but for the sake of speaking in layman's terms, this specific iteration of the DSi build was the fourth iteration. Eggman Legends 3 This is a rather unfortunate story. Mega Man Legends 3 was set to be the fourth entry in the Mega Man Legends series, releasing for the Nintendo 3DS sometime in the early 2010s. It was announced at E3 2010, and it had a lot of fan support and participation in its development, as designs for Mega Man and a new character named Arrow were chosen in this manner. In 2011, Capcom intended to release a demo version of the game entitled Mega Man Legends 3 Prototype Version, which would serve as a prologue to the main game. However, on July 18th of that year, Capcom officially announced the cancellation of the game as well as the prototype version. According to the Games Radar, Nintendo Power journalist Chris Hoffman was the sole person to play the prototype version before its cancellation. Tapping the Super Mario Bros. theme on the internet browser On a new Nintendo 3DS or new Nintendo 3DS XL system, if you open the internet browser and tap the first few notes of the Super Mario Bros. theme on a new page, your bookmarks will turn into levels you can destroy in a breakout or Arkanoid-style game. I love these little Easter eggs Nintendo slips into their hardware. Game & Watch Game on the Sound app in the Nintendo 3DS's sound app, if you play an MP3 file, you can also play a simple Game & Watch minigame on the top screen. Photo Dojo This DSiWare game was released in Japan in December 2009 and North America in May 2010. It's a fighting game where you can create your own fighters by taking pictures of people or yourself in different poses to represent attacking, blocking, taunting, etc. It's a very simplistic game mechanically, and it's really not worth writing home about. Big Hero 6 Battle in the Bay this video game adaptation of the 2014 animated film Big Hero 6 was released for the DS and 3DS in February 2015. Notably, this was the last game released for the Nintendo DS, 11 years after its launch. Pretty impressive if you ask me that the DS lasted that long. Pokemon Typing Adventure Learn with Pokemon Typing Adventure is exactly what it sounds like, a Nintendo DS game meant to teach typing skills via the use of a special peripheral called the Nintendo Wireless Keyboard that came bundled with the game, just featuring a Pokemon skin. If you live in North America like me and have never heard of this spinoff before, that's because it never saw a release in this territory. Japan, Europe, and Australia were the only regions to see this game, releasing in 2011, 2012, and 2013 respectively. Connectivity with the Wii A handful of Nintendo DS games supported connectivity with the Wii in some manner. For example, Players can transport their character from Animal Crossing Wild World on the DS to Animal Crossing City Folk on the Wii, Pokemon from Diamond and Pearl can be stored in My Pokemon Ranch on the Wii, and both Wii and Nintendo DS versions of Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles Echoes of Time could link up for multiplayer activities. Real Madrid The Game so Real Madrid the game was a sports game released for the Wii in Europe, based on the real-life Real Madrid football team, or if you're a filthy American like me, soccer. In the trailer for the game, they advertise a DS version of the title, but it seems to never have been released. Minecraft DS Minecraft New Nintendo 3DS Edition was released in North America in September 2017. Due to hardware limitations, world sizes are limited, and the mob cap is reduced. This version of Minecraft stopped receiving updates in January 2019, meaning that it is missing content from major patches like the Nether Update, Update Aquatic, Village and Pillage, etc. Ashley's Song Subliminal Message in WarioWare Touch, if you go to the toy room and open the turntable widget, you can play Ashley's song and spin the record to mess with the sound. However, if you do this during the first solo of the song, the lyrics will be meshed into... It's just a coincidence though, and the actual lyrics do not contain this phrase, though it became enough of a problem at the time that Nintendo themselves had to dissuade fears of any subliminal messaging going on. 
Super Mario 64 DS's negative aura. You ever get that feeling that when you play a certain video game that something just isn't right? Maybe it's the way the environment looks or how the music amplifies a certain sense of loneliness. Super Mario 64 DS could certainly instill these feelings and sensations into the player. After all, the strange aura that surrounds the Nintendo 64 original lingers in this remake. But perhaps that's just it. Perhaps the negative aura around Super Mario 64 DS is caused by the notion that you're not playing Super Mario 64, but rather a cruel copy of it. A facade that is just meant to replicate your memories of days gone by. Doko Demo Winoma Winoma was a video on demand service for the Wii that was available only in Japan from 2009 to 2012. It could be downloaded from the Wii Shop channel and allowed for the purchase of paid content through it. Doko Demo Winoma was an extension to the service on the DSi, allowing videos from Winoma to be saved on the DSi to be watched on the go. First video game console on Mount Everest. In 2005, Mountaineer Neil Muller ascended the 29,000 foot tall peak of Mount Everest with a variety of different electronic devices on him, among them being a Nintendo DS. He and his team's radios, MP3 players, and laptop all died during the ascent, but the Nintendo DS preserved. Maybe a Nintendium is real. Japanese Man Married a Love Plus Character Love Plus is a dating sim released for the Nintendo DS exclusively in Japan in September of 2009. In December of that same year, a 27-year-old Tokyo man going by the handle of Sound 9000 expressed his love for the character Nene Anagasaki in Love Plus by marrying her in a ceremony watched online by thousands. While the marriage was not legally binding, a sentiment expressed by Sound 9000 himself, the ceremony was his way of expressing his love for the character. In fact, he's quoted as saying, Today's Japanese youth can't express their true feelings in reality. They can only do it in the virtual world. It's the reverse of reality that they can only talk about how they feel to a friend in the virtual world. A little prescient of the future regarding VR and AI if you ask me, but I think the story is a little upsetting in the sense that people feel the need to do this kind of stuff to feel gratification. Maybe that's just me though. Touch Dick. No, this isn't referring to an explicit adults-only Nintendo DS game. Rather, a dictionary game released only in South Korea in July of 2005. It launched under the title of Touch Dictionary, rather than its former title of Touch Dick, due to Westerners bullying the publishers over its unintentional vulgarity. Doki Doki Maho Shinpan. I'm going to be very brief with this because it's one of those games that could only be made in Japan, and its content is questionable as a result. In the game, you take the role of a junior high school student who must suss out a witch among the student body by searching for hidden marks on the female student's bodies. Yeah, moving on. Korg DSN-12 Korg is a well-known company that specializes in making state-of-the-art sound synthesizers and other equipment musicians need such as keyboards, mixers, tuners, speakers, you name it, they probably have it. They also sell software, one of which being Korg DSN-12, an audio sound production tool released for the 3DS in October of 2014. It has the added benefit of being able to see your sound visualized in an oscilloscope on the top screen, which can be seen in 3D. Tommy Two-Tone Reference in the Nintendo DS's Wi-Fi connection instruction booklet, the example WEP key they give is 8675309, a reference to the American pop band Tommy Two-Tone's song, 8675309 Jenny. Bomberman 3DS A game simply titled Bomberman was meant for release on the 3DS sometime in 2011. An entry into the popular and well-regarded Bomberman franchise, it was to feature both a single-player campaign as well as a multiplayer mode. It was announced at E3 2010, but kept having its release date pushed back until it was eventually axed in March 2011, and the game's developer, Hudson Soft, would become defunct a year later following a merging with Konami. Mario's Face at E3 2004, Nintendo displayed Mario's face, a tech demo meant to show off the capabilities and power of the Nintendo DS system. One could tug on both Mario and Wario's faces using the DS's touchscreen. This demo was also lost media, as it has never resurfaced online following its public demo, but footage and screenshots do exist online. Clueless Fashion DS In a situation like Mean Girls DS, this too was a DS adaptation of a popular teen comedy film, in this instance being Clueless. Despite being rated by both American and European ratings boards, it would never see an official release, though its ROM would be dumped online by Raymona again on April 2nd, 2021. IQ DS Some of Nintendo's consoles have been released in China through the company IQ, the Nintendo DS being no exception. Released on July 23rd, 2005, the IQ DS saw just six games released for the system. These games are Playroom and WarioWare Touched, both releasing in 2005, Yoshi Touch and Go in 2006, Super Mario 64 DS in 2007, and New Super Mario Bros. and Nintendo Dogs in 2009. Nintendo Fan Network Did you know that Nintendo owns a sports team? Well, technically they used to, but that's besides the point. In 1992, Nintendo of America became the owner of the Seattle Mariners, a baseball team from, well, Seattle. 
They maintained ownership of the team up until 2016, where they sold most of their shares in the team, though they still have a 10% ownership. So where does Nintendo Fan Network fall into this? Well, this was a piece of software for the Nintendo DS released in 2007 that was available only to visitors at T-Mobile Park, the home stadium for the Seattle Mariners. Through the Nintendo Fan Network, game attendees could order food, view baseball stats, and PA announcements. It was later available for the 3DS as well. Nintendo 3DS Guide Louvre So at the time of the Nintendo 3DS, the famous museum in Paris offered self-guided tours that could be facilitated with rentable 3DS units featuring this application. In the museum's gift shop, you could also buy a physical copy of the application, as this was the only place you could do so, although it is downloadable from the eShop. Interestingly, because of the Louvre's global draw and appeal, the physical copy of Nintendo 3DS Guide Louvre is the only region-free 3DS game. Cartoon Network Backlot Party this was a cancelled game meant for release on the Nintendo 3DS and Wii in 2015. Not a lot is known about the title, but it's said to have featured content from popular Cartoon Network shows like Ed, Ed and Nettie, Regular Show, and Adventure Time. I'm not sure why this is so far down on the iceberg, given that it just appears to be a simple cancelled title, so if I'm missing something, again, just let me know. Mega Man 2 on PTC Petite Computer is a software development application available for the 3DS that allows for the creation of video games using BASIC, a coding language. Essentially, it's kind of like having a computer emulated on your 3DS. In 2014, a developer known as Disco Stew released a version of Mega Man 2 coded entirely using Petite Computer. It also has some additional features, including a boss rush and a stage creator. Pretty impressive if you ask me. Nintendo XDS In the run-up to the announcement of the Nintendo Switch, then only known as the NX, speculation was wild as to what the successor to the Wii U would be. The Nintendo XDS was just one of many fakes passed around as being legitimate, with this one essentially being a fully portable Wii U. Beyonce Rhythm Heaven commercial To the beat of more than 50 mini games, Rhythm Heaven, rated E for everyone, now on Nintendo DSi. Your dog can die in Nintendo Dogs. No, it can't. Or can it? Steve O almost gets mauled by a lion in a Nintendo DS commercial. Steve-O of Jackass fame has done some insane stuff throughout his life for the sake of entertainment, and this incident is no exception. Really, it's exactly what you think it is. While filming one of the first commercials for the Nintendo DS, one of the lions on the shoot got a little too comfy with Steve-O, though ultimately, and thankfully, he escaped unharmed. Bubble Bobble Revolution Levels 31 through 100 in the original North American release of Bubble Bobble Revolution for the Nintendo DS, a glitch prevented the game from being completed, as a boss meant to spawn on stage 30 would fail to do so, meaning that levels 31 to 100 were completely inaccessible. Codemasters, the developers of the game, did eventually release a patched version, however. Half-Elf Tentacle Assault DS I genuinely don't think I can talk about this on YouTube, and I'm not really, really willing to take a risk here, so feel free to research this one on your own, though based on the title, I think we can all draw our own conclusions here. Mario Kart DS's credit screen can cause depression. There comes a time in every gamer's life when the advent of their favorite game's credits looms large, and I'm sure Mario Kart DS is no exception to this. It certainly helps that the visuals during this sequence are a little melancholic. If you're watching this video and relate to this entry, please let me know in the comments. I'm genuinely interested to see if anyone feels similarly. Me Universe Theory In a very lengthy post on the subreddit Game Theorist, user... Uh, well, you deleted here describes his theory that every game featuring Miis has a crucial element, such as Miitopia, Wii Sports, etc., are all connected and share a chronological timeline. I'm not going to go over it in its entirety here as it would take far too long, but I'll link it in the description if you want to give it a read yourself. Baldi's Basics was made for the 3DS. The cult horror game Baldi's Basics in Education and Learning was originally meant for release on the Nintendo 3DS, but it was scrapped and development was restarted for the PC. Mario Motors in the early 2000s, Yu Saito of Seaman fame pitched this title to Shigeru Miyamoto and the late Satoru Iwata. In this game, players could sculpt pieces of metal into engines that could be used for carts, and how the engine was made would presumably affect the performance of the cart. No gameplay footage exists as of the release of this video, but photographs do exist. And that's the Nintendo DS 3DS Iceberg. 
I hope you enjoyed this little deep dive I've done. This is the first time I've done a video like this or made a video in any capacity really. So feedback is definitely appreciated. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, thank you for watching. Uh, see you next time, maybe, perhaps. We'll see.